Triple R coming at you from five miles outside of Grand Teton National Park at the Fireside Campground, May 2nd, 2016. It's a Monday. Uh, it was about a five and a half to six hour drive today. I left Buffalo, Wyoming. And uh, it's 3.30 now. And uh, I got four days here. The weather just turned beautiful. It's 58 degrees and the sun is just beaming right down. Uh, you can see the peaks of the Tetons. They're filled and covered with snow. I'll show them to you in a second. I called the visitor center, asked about the uh, hiking trails, and they said, uh, well, do you like to hike in snow? I said, I just, just hiked in snow in South Dakota, so so then they're all open if you got the appropriate gear. And I, I asked, um, is bear spay, spray recommended? And he said, highly recommended. Uh, I said, well, I hike alone, so I guess uh, I definitely should get it. And he said, yeah, you definitely need it. And they sell it there. Uh, I haven't had any bear encounters in any hiking. I haven't had any bear spray. So I'm going to pick some up. I had considered going to do the, a little bit of hiking today. But, uh, I don't know, a little wiped out, I guess, after the drive. And I got, I got groceries I need to get, and I'm going to settle in. It's going to be nice the next few days, so I can go into the park Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Hike all three days. And then Friday, I got my reservations 30 miles away in Yellowstone for a week. Uh, somebody asked me if I'm traveling alone on the YouTube comments. And uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> That's really about all there is to say about that. Um, you know, I meet, I meet other RVers at parks. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't talk to anybody at a park. Uh, but last night was, was a good night at, at the park. Had uh, the people next to me. Uh, they fed me. They cooked. They cooked sausage and spaghetti, and we sat on the picnic bench and we ate and talked. And uh, they're going to be in Yellowstone on the sixth too. They're going to Montana first. We we, we uh, kind of following each other because they were in Custer State Park the two days before when I was. Um, but I went to Devil's Tower. They didn't. Okay, so let me let me show you what I'm. All right, so I'm about 100 yards on the trail, just started, and there's a moose, and he's looking right at me. Uh, this is my first ever moose sighting. But, uh, <laughs> there we go. It's about 42 degrees, 9 a.m., and I'm doing about a six mile deal today, Taggart Lake. There you go. Sun is out and shining. And I'll show you where I just came from. If you can see, parking area, maybe a hundred yards away. So this is National Park number 11. The, uh, the 30 mile drive that uh, got me excited, getting to Yellowstone from where I'm at, going right through the Teton Park and into Yellowstone. 
is now gonna be more like three and a half hours. Uh, that road is closed, a ranger told me as I came in here to the park. It doesn't open until the middle of May and I'm early. As a matter of fact, uh, the fishing village where I'm staying in Yellowstone, they open for RV camping on the day that I get there. Most everything else is still closed until mid-May, which just probably a pretty good guess. But I'm thinking that means the park isn't going to be very crowded, which is nice. So I have to go all the way around, go through Jackson Hole, and I have to go all the way around and come up the backside from the west and then go across the park. The ranger told me it was three hours from his ranger station. Well, it's a half hour from the campground to the ranger station. 25 plus miles. So a little bit of a bummer. I was kind of already looking forward to a real quick drive and boom, get into Yellowstone and get out for the day. But not to be. And I don't know what took me so long. I feel like a moron. I shouldn't even be saying this because it's so idiotic. But now, after my 11th park, I just now finally purchased my $80 annual National Park Pass, which gets me into any and all national parks for a year. It's 20 and 30 bucks per shot. I don't know what the heck I was thinking and what I was waiting for to get to number 11. It may be because some of them, there is no charge. Like Congaree, there was no fee to get in there. Just drove right up and parked. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains. I left Pigeon Forge, drove right into the park, parked at uh, the trailhead at the Tennessee, North Carolina state line and hiked some of the AT again. And speaking of the AT, uh, I saw the comment posted about uh, how my, uh, my views are considerably low and less uh, since I left the AT. Yeah, I saw that. That's, that's, that doesn't bother me at all. I'm not, I'm not doing this for people that I've never seen or met before. Uh, this, is, this is my adventure that I'm documenting so that I'll have a record of it for my friends and family and even myself in later years the same way you know, 20 years ago we used to all take pictures and get them developed and film in a photo album and then you know you'd, you'd show the photo album to family and, and, and friends and stuff over years this is the same thing this is my video documentary of my adventure as I travel the country visiting all the, the parks and other places and it's more than just about national parks Golden Gate Bridge Niagara Falls Arlington Cemetery Devil's Tower. Things of significance besides national parks. And some of the state parks are fantastic. So yeah, I saw it. I saw the comment. It doesn't phase me. Like I said, if you want to keep watching, you can come along with me around the country and all the parks and the hiking through my eyes and my commentary. Oh, it's just... It's fantastic out here. So tomorrow I'm going to do a, a tougher trail. It's eight miles. It's the Death Canyon Trail, and it's more in the mountainous terrain. It has 2,600 feet of uh, climbing. Uh, today, this trail only has 900 feet of climbing. And I have several choices right now. Okay, heading to Bradley Lake, another mile away. So, uh, give you my itinerary. It's booked through the 4th of July, and I stopped right there. So, after Yellowstone, I'm down to Rocky Mountain National Park, uh, Great Sand Dunes, and then after Great Sand Dunes, I'm taking a few days in Colorado Springs, at Pikes Peak RV Park, and I plan on uh, hiking Pikes Peak over 14,000 feet. It takes two days. There's a uh, like a hostel, a cabin halfway up, where they'll feed you dinner and breakfast, and they have 
bunks and stuff like that to stay at if that's what you choose. So I'm gonna look into that. And then a uh, Black Canyon Gunnison. I did not book Mesa Verde yet. It's in the lower corner of the state and I'll be going straight across to Utah. And I have reservations at all five Utah National Parks. And then when that's done, I'm gonna go up to the top of the state and I'm gonna spend uh, a few days in 4th of July in Provo. And just uh, chill out and relax, take a break. And uh, from there, mid-July into Vegas for a week or so. After that, I might change up the pace a little. I'm having to book things so far in advance so that they're not sold out in the planning. It's, it's arduous in the brain I'm thinking about uh, spending maybe a month in California not necessarily at the national parks but uh, more scenic stuff uh, doing the uh, highway one scenic route um, going into wine country and doing some of the scenic drives along the wine country and stopping in at the vineyards uh, San Diego Golden Gate Bridge might even take in the Anaheim Angels baseball game. Just just a little change of pace away from all the parks and stuff. Um, California's too crowded for me, and I'm going to probably get frustrated with, with that, pulling a rig behind me. But that's the thought and the idea. It's not set in stone. I may, I may, and I should because it's right there, right leaving Las Vegas, right across the line is Death Valley National Park. It's right there. And it's uh, mid-July. And growing up in Florida, July and August, that heat and humidity is just sticky and wet. And I might want to go into Death Valley at that time just to experience what that heat is like in that park. And um, what I may do for that visit, I've always looked at the map, there's like this one road, paved road that goes through the park and a scenic road and you could stop. And uh, I might do that because there isn't any camping in there that's, um, I mean, it's dry camping. It'd be sweating to death. So I may do that drive and uh, that'll be my visit to that park. I could spend a half day in there. It's a big place. All right, roadies. Keep watching if you want. I'm gonna keep taking you around the country. And uh, I'm having a much better time now doing this. It's, uh, it's much more thrilling. But I will be back on the AT, uh, Shenandoah's National Park, right there on the trail. I'll be hiking there, Acadia up in Maine. And then can go into Katahdin and uh, hit other places on the AT along the way, all 14 states. Well, this is the view to start the day. Another day of hiking in the Grand Tetons, uh, the Death Canyon Trail is uh, is out, definitely out. Snowpack is is too heavy and thick. So I am hiking the very popular. Jenny Lake Trail today. Looking at about seven miles. I'm working my way up to Hidden Falls. I think it. Uh, you stand at uh, an overlook looking down at a 200 foot waterfall. Once again, uh, pretty isolated, pretty empty out here. The, the trailhead had a few people in the parking lot. But not that many. The uh, the scent of these evergreen pines 
is strong. It's good. I like it. it smells like Christmas. There's a some moose droppings so far all over the trail and I I'm, I'm maybe a quarter mile in. I've noticed lately that my breathing is more labored. Harder to get as much oxygen as I'm used to in uh, sunny southwest Florida. Got one more day tomorrow. I think I'm gonna do the uh, two ocean hike. It's about six miles. Very quiet out here this morning. A little eerie. I had two dreams last night about bears. There's an estimated 400 to 600 grizzly bears in the uh, park, in addition to black bears. And of course, uh, the moose and uh, even wolves. The wolves were out and howling most of the time. Now that is Jenny Lake. That's this is the trail. It just it goes all the way around. Little ups and downs. I think it was about uh, 800 feet, 850 feet of, of total climbing for the seven miles. About the same as yesterday. There's nobody out here. Now this, this is why I can't hike uh, Death Canyon, because it's, it's higher up in the mountains and the snow is just like this. It's just, it's just all way too heavy and thick. And the trail, since there's no, not many people out here, it wouldn't be discernible. Nobody's hiking it. There's a bear claw right there in the snow. Pretty fresh too. Well, I got my bear spray out and in my hand, I can hear the uh, falls ahead of me uh, rumbling hard. Haven't seen another soul out here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's badass. That is tough. Looks like I got a bit of navigating to do this way. 
to maybe get up to the top of them. Uh oh, what's this? Trail closed. Horse trail. It says Hidden Falls is this way, but it says trail is closed. Well, that takes care of that, doesn't it? I'll see what's right down here and uh, if it's good view, I'll pick it up. Okay, cool. I'm going to a footbridge right over top of the falls. Stuff. Oh, what, what is this thing? An otter? <laughs> Just some kind of marmot. <laughs> Well, I guess this continues to loop all the way. Oh, sorry for that. I wasn't even looking. <laughs> I guess this continues to loop all the way around. Inspiration point. They got a lot of it mar uh, blocked off. Boat dock 200 yards this way, and then I can come back up and uh, go take a look at an inspiration point, and that'll pretty much do it for today. Well, just uh, finishing up today's hike and uh, well, about uh, the length of a football field behind me. There was uh, two ladies sitting uh, by the the bank of the uh, lake uh, staring into a, a single, single lens uh, Nikon on a tripod looking up into the mountain range. And uh, so what do you, seen anything good? Uh, said, yeah, mountain goat. <laughs> You can look if you want. Uh, cool. So yeah, got to uh, look up in the mountain range and see a mountain goat up there just hanging around. And uh, I guess they work for the park. They uh, mentioned that uh, they're documenting the sightings and uh, just sit there patiently watching. So that was pretty cool. And that is the end of today.